this is what we're talking about, these coefficients. Okay, these coefficients. This is a function of x, right? So I'm going to say, well, let's call that f. Okay. Now, where will I go from here? Well, I'm going to go to calculus. You're like, calculus? No, don't go to calculus. Calculus is not about discrete numbers. Calculus is the mathematics of continuous numbers, right? Which is why like continuity and limits are the kinds of things the way you start calculus, okay? But just like Hong Kong and London, binomial theorem and calculus are made of the same DNA. Watch. Uh, what can I do to this? What can I do? With calculus, I could differentiate it. I could differentiate it. That'd be a simple kind of thing. I'll go f dash. Okay. Now, it's a simple function. I know you don't know what n is, but you don't need to. What's the derivative? n, 1 plus x, n minus 1. Oh, hmm. So even though, even though calculus is about continuous numbers, you can see the discrete numbers sneak in, don't they? Right? Let's keep going. Let's see if we can work out a pattern here. Okay, if I differentiate it, let's go to the second derivative. Okay. Um, I repeat the process, don't I? Okay, so that n's hanging out of there, but I now multiply by the new power, right? So I'm going to get n and minus 1. And the power drops down one more time. You happy with that? Cool, okay. Now, here was one of the problems with what I showed you yesterday, okay? Um, I showed you one particular line of Pascal's triangle, this one. Um, I think it was this. Okay, and then we looked at the pattern and then I generalized from there. Okay, but that's a really kind of dicey thing to do. I want to be able to generalize properly and calculus lets you do that. Okay, first, second derivative. Let's just do the third one, but because I don't want to have dashes flying around everywhere, I'll just introduce a subtle little extra bit of notation, which is that rather than do more dashes, I'm just going to put that number up there in brackets. I can't just make it a three to indicate the third derivative because if you saw f, 3x, what would you guess that means? Cubed, right. So when it's in brackets, that means I've differentiated three times, okay? I'm doing it three times so establish the pattern, right? What are you going to get? n, n minus 1, n minus 2, there you go, power comes down, and it reduces by 1. Okay, now I think this is enough to establish well, what happens if I went some indeterminate number of times, right? Not one or two or three, but, ooh, I don't know, something like, say, r times, okay? What would be, dot, 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 what would the rth derivative be? Hmm. Well, I've differentiated some number of times, right? So I'm going to go n, and then I'm going to go n minus 1, n minus 2, and then I'll have to multiply some number of times. Where will I end? What will the last term in this product be? Hmm. Now, you have a look at the numbers, right? When I differentiated once, it was n. When I differentiated twice, it was n minus 1, where I ended. When I differentiated three times, it was n minus 2, where I ended, right? So they all start with n. They all subtract a number. What did they subtract? They subtract ah, oh, but it's not quiet, is it? Right? Because this is not n minus three. It's not n minus two. I'm off by one, so so I have to add one to compensate. That's where I end. Are you happy with that? That's my last, the last power that got brought down. Okay. Then you go. Well, there's the x term that's still there because of chain rule, right? What will the new power be? N minus r, right? Good. Okay. Now, at the moment, um. You're starting to think, okay, this is a bit sus, right? I can see some factorial business in here, quite clearly, right? Um, but how do I work with it? How do I work with it? Mm, I think you can work it out, right? There's, there's not one neat factorial in here. There are two, right? What are they? Have a look. I can't just write its n factorial at the front, right? Because not, it doesn't go down all the way to three, two, one, finish. Okay, so I have to divide by something, don't I? What's missing off the end? If I gave you, for example, 10 times 9 times 8, you know there has to be a 10 factorial, right? But of course you're, you're missing, what are you missing? 
seven, six, five, four, etc. Right? You're missing seven factorial. Right? Whatever that next term is, that missing one, you're missing all of the ones after it. So what's the missing term here? It'll be n minus r, and then n minus r minus one, n minus r minus two, all the way down to the end. Okay. So therefore, I have this. Hmm, suspicious, right? Obviously, you could guess that because you already know what this result is going to be, but you can see it even if you didn't know. If we started here, you could see it based on this kind of logic, right? Okay, so that's all of the stuff out the front, right? 1 plus x n minus r. Okay, this is the rth derivative of f. Okay, now hold on a second, hold on a second. Recite for me again. What, what is this? What are we after? That NCR, the definition was it's the, it's the coefficient of all of these terms, right? All I'm really interested in is the coefficients. There's no x's here, right? So what would be a neat way to get rid of the x's in this equation? I don't want the x's there anymore. I'm only interested in the coefficients, so what I'll do is, this is the problematic term. I need to flick it out of the way. Right? So I can choose a value of x, like it's a, it's a derivative. It exists for, and it's, um, it's a polynomial, right? No discontinuity. Just pick a value of x, any value of x, that'll get rid of this. And the obvious choice is zero, right? If I make x equals zero, this would just be one to the power of whatever. Doesn't matter, okay? So therefore, how do I write this? If x equals zero, it would be the r derivative of f at zero. Is that okay? Uh, so it will be n factorial on n minus r factorial times 1 to the power of that. So it's just n factorial on n minus r factorial. Okay, now this is good. <coughs> this is good, right? This is astonishingly close to what I'm after. It's not there, is it? I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be exactly that because um, this is not about the coefficients of this, right? It's about some differentiating thing, right? Sorry, I accidentally rubbed some off. So being that we are very, very close, but not there, what else could we do here? How do I need to, how am I going to get, well, I have, I have this part, I have this part. How do I get the rest of it into the picture? Hmm. Now I'm pausing here because I, I can immediately tell you and then it will be obvious, right? But this is, this is the actual valuable moment where you can think about it not having worked out what it is already and think, okay, if I set out to prove this and this is what I already know, What's missing? It's about coefficients, right? It's about coefficients. I approached this in such a way that I got this part out, right? But I didn't say anything about these coefficients. I never did, right? None of this has to do with, apart from when I, um, put in zero to get rid of all the x terms, right? None of it actually tells you it has coefficients in it. That's why none of this notation appears, right? It's the conspicuous absence from it, okay? So how can I get it? Um, well, it comes back to f, doesn't it? But I know how to write f. I know how to write f exactly in terms of the coefficients that I've defined, okay? What would the first coefficient be? The first, I should have said zeroth, I suppose, because it'll be n choose zero, right? Um, in Pascal's triangle, it'll be five choose naught, and then it'll be five choose one, five choose two, and so on, okay? So I'm gonna have the next one, n z one. What power of x will there be? Just one, right? It matches, actually, what your um, r value is, and then you get the next one, and that's three, I think that's enough. Where do I end again? <coughs> N, N, right? And of course your last value of X, the biggest one. Okay, cool. Hmm, now, 
I looked at this thing, F, and then I did these processes to it, right? And here's where I arrived. Now I've got the same thing, but I'm looking at it from a different angle. Right? I'm looking at the same object. I'm looking at the same object, right? But I want to be able to compare this thing. This is where I ended up, right? So I'm going to take the same object, and I'm going to apply exactly the same processes to it. And in theory, if I can get to an expression for this, then whatever I end with here should be equal to that, right? If I do all the same things to it, okay? So what did I do? I differentiated first, didn't I? Okay. What's f dash? What happens to it? What happens to that nc0 at the front? Disappears. You just get nc1, right? Actually, you get 1 times nc1. Why is that? Why is there a 1 there? Ah, because it's because of this power, isn't it? I know we're not used to writing it, but it's going to be helpful for us, right? What happens to this guy? Um, the 2 comes out the front. And then he loses one of his powers. And I don't have it here, but you can guess what the next one will be, right? What should I write? It would have been a cubed term. So it would be 3 and 3, right? And now that's going to be an x squared term. There's the 3x squared in there, the derivative. See that? Where do I end? There'll be an n out the front. n, c, n. Oops, sorry. Brackets the wrong way. And the power of this will be, it's dropped down 1, hasn't it? Just like this drop down one. So, so this line here is the expansion of this line. Does that make sense? Okay. What did I do then? I differentiated again. I'm trying to work out a pattern here, right? So, second derivative. Okay, what happens to the first term? It disappears because it's a constant. What happens to the next term? Uh, well, it'll be 2 times 1, right? And C2. And then that x disappears. Okay. What happens to this guy? Well, he'll become 3 times 2. And then his power drops down by 1. You don't have it there, but you can guess what the next term will be. right? It used to be an x to the 4 term up here. Then it became an x cubed term here. So now it'll be an x squared term here. It'll be 4 by 3 by 2. It'll be nc4. And now it'll be an x squared term. What will the last term be? It comes from this guy. So it'll be n. Bring the power down. And reduce it by 1. Okay. Now I know before we went to 3, but I wonder if you can see the pattern by now. Okay. What will happen if I do this dot 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 r times? What will happen? Hmm. Well, a whole bunch of um, these guys at the front will disappear, won't they? The more times you differentiate, the more terms you get rid of, okay? Until eventually, your first term will be a constant. What constant will it be? How do the numbers match up? Um, well, with our first derivative, right? What I had here was a 1. Actually, I had a 1 factorial, didn't I? Right? When I differentiated twice, I had 2 times 1. I had, um, I had 2 factorial, right? So by the time I've done this r times, what would you guess is out the front? That's going to be r factorial, right? And then there's going to be that coefficient, wherever it started, which coefficient will it be? It'll be the r coefficient, ncr, right? You can see the numbers match up, right? This is why it was so important to put a 1 there, okay? Um, now that's the constant term. Um, now this is interesting. You'll get a whole bunch of terms after this, okay? Um, but... I'm actually not interested in what they are. Uh, um, I'm only interested in the fact that they're all going to have a common factor of x. Now you, you can go ahead and work out what actually belongs in here. Okay? But all I want to know is that they all have x's in them. Why would this be significant that they all have at least one x in them? Aha, uh -huh, because immediately after this, I got to here, and then I said, but I don't want any of the x's. And so we did this. Right? And it, it cleared out all the x's, just like it's going to do here. Right? So let's do that. Let's substitute in x equals 0. Whatever these guys are, they all collapse. Okay? They all disappear. 
So now I'm left with this. At x equals 0, the r derivative, from this angle, from, from this angle, right, the expansion angle, right, uh, rather than the chain rule angle. That's how I approached on that side. Um, apparently, it's going to be this. Can you finish it for me? Can you finish it for me? I said we should end up at the same spot. We've got this derivative at 0, and we've got this derivative at 0. They should be the same, right? So I've got, uh, sorry, r factorial at the front, times that coefficient that's left over after all the differentiating. That's equal to n factorial on n minus r factorial. So all you need to do is divide. And that's freaking badass, I think. <laughs> um, now, like I said, like I said, um, discrete numbers? Really? Why calculus? Why calculus? Well, maybe now you can see some of the reasons why. Actually, it's a very clever, very, very, very clever way to go about it.